Good morning, folks. UC Santa Cruz publishing findings that the most recent eight-pointer on Earth, the first ever location-specific uptick warning on this channel, is officially the largest deep quake ever recorded. Such a rumble was thought to be impossible in the interface regions 400 to 700 kilometers down, but the rocks slid at up to 9,000 miles per hour in the instantaneous slip. Got the latest Arctic ice animation from NASA here. Nowhere near the melt we had last year due to an overly cold summer at the North Pole. It is indeed still melting underneath as the oceans are absorbing heat and continue their assault beneath the surface. Many of you have been asking about deep impact. We lost communication with the satellite about a month ago and they are officially giving up. She's gone. It was well past its life expectancy after completing its mission nearly eight years ago. Quickly kicking to RSOE for a cyanobacterial warning. It matches the Loyola release regarding ultra-hazardous air quality in the Midwest. We're at 250% of the danger line. Last article is more of an FYI. The IPCC, remember that's the group blaming you for climate change. This week, the first working group report will detail the basic science, but look at the 2014 menu. Mitigating climate change means geoengineering, weather modification, and solar radiation management, better known in this group as chemtrails. The Counter-Strike Chapters 4 and 5 are going to dive into that, but perhaps we'll speed up the timetables. Got a flash flood in New Zealand, all a result of that moisture funneled by the high pressure regulator in eastern Australia, all moisture staying south. I was incorrect about Europe yesterday. That northern low never crested down onto the UK. I imagine storms are on deck whenever it does decide to do so. Starting one day after the Colorado disaster, here's what was added to the mix in complexing the emergency in Mexico. This is tremendous rainfall, and as of now, the only change is the lack of an organized storm amidst the continuing rain. Eyes on that convergence line, and indeed all convergence is planet-wide. Folks, this works like clockwork along those lines. West Pacific, Super Typhoon Usagi is the current nightmare, with the next one to the right developing now. Sunspots of interest are all on the eastern hemisphere still turning in. The big guy down south is no complexity, but big boys can pop anyway. It's not so with the smaller umbras up north. They will need more mixing. Still tough to see the magnetics on the incomer up north, but it appears to be worth monitoring. Either way, such intrigue on the intensity and magnetograms belies the solar quiet. It's been quieter recently, but this is still pathetic for solar max. Solar wind calm and quiet as well. Looking at Gong from last night, the umbral fields popped open in an earth-facing position. Also, the general energy in the system shifted as the north polar coronal hole gained significant power. The earth-facing group is still relatively weak, but the factors remained and we took a six-pointer in Indonesia. It was the top quake of the day. In addition to the evening news last night, we had a little new fly on the wall under interesting discussions. I've gone ahead and removed the membership lock on this one video. It's way too cool to keep hidden away. Incoming massive filament is meeting some instability. That's our top watch today. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.